everybody, and welcome to the New Movie Thing Show, where we go and see new movies in the theaters, so you don't have to. Yeah, and also, if you don't want to go to the movie theaters and see those movies, you can stay home and go to netflix.com slash sourcefed. You can get a whole month of streaming movies, and then you can join us on our movie club show, so you don't have to go to the movie theater, as I said earlier. I'm Steve Zaragoza. And I'm DJ Wooldridge. So, DJ and I saw Noah today. Yes, the biblical epic that came out today from Darren Aronofsky. Yeah, for sure. And my quickie review for the movie is prepare for a very long, very epic, very well-acted movie, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it as well. If you're going uh, to see the movie for its strict adherence to the Bible, uh, don't. And if you're going to the movie to see if it throws out everything from the Bible, also don't expect that as well. So who directed the movie? The movie was directed by Darren Aronofsky, who mm -hmm. also did Requiem for a Dream mm -hmm. and Pi, and most recently Wrestler and Black Swan. Black Swan, yeah. And Pi is a fantastic little film if you've never mm -hmm. seen it. And Requiem for a Dream is a frightening, terrifying film that should be shown to children. I can't think of a Darren Aronofsky movie I've seen that I didn't enjoy. I haven't seen The Fountain, but I think every other one I've watched I really loved. Um, I didn't really like Black Swan very much. Really? But yeah, but other than that, yeah. I'm I'm a big oh, Aronofsky fan. All right, cool. The movie stars Russell Crowe as mm -hmm. Noah. Uh, the titular and Noah. The titular Noah, mm -hmm. and also the titular Jennifer Connelly. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the titular Emma Watson. And the titular Emma Watson. And the dicular Ray Winstone. <laughs> and uh, Douglas Booth, who uh, you and Joe got to uh, hang out with on Table Talk. That's, That's going right. To go up Monday. It's going up Monday. It's a surprise. Basically, it's the Noah story. Yes. Uh, God wants to cleanse the earth. I'm sorry. The creator wants to cleanse the earth of all the evil raping and horrible murdering yeah, of going all on. all the bad people. And I will say this movie does a good job of saying uh, those raping, murdering people are, are very bad. Yeah, pretty bad. You know those movies where it's like, all oh, these people are bad people, but we never really go into why and they don't seem that bad? You don't have that question in this movie. They're no, you don't. Awful. You yeah. get to see them and they're yeah, pretty awful people. Pretty terrible. Yeah, it kind of follows this, um, you know, you were talking about this too, but the, the beginning of the film kind of has this very fantasy, Lord of the Rings-esque type, yeah. like, uh, story of what what's going on in the world, what, like, what's all this stuff? Who are these people? It's kind of, like, magical, too. There's a lot of magical yeah. things happening. I would say, you disagree with me, I would say I feel like the first half hour of the movie is kind of garbage, because it feels like a fantasy movie where they're trying to build a world, but the world's not that interesting. Like, it doesn't feel like, and I feel it might be part of the aesthetic that things feel kind of empty because it's supposed to be the beginning of humanity. Yeah, and all that's that how stuff. that's that's how I saw it, and that's but, uh, and I was perfectly fine with that aesthetic. So I was sitting there thinking that I was in some sort of fever dream. Like I, I think I leaned over to you a couple times and been like, what, "Is this really happening? Is this <laughs> I really mean, the movie I, we're watching?" But look, it is Aronofsky, and he's a very visual man. That's very so. true. I think it's after that half hour, maybe an hour in, it kicks into this other real moral quandary that Noah has based on what he feels the creator's telling him, and it becomes super interesting. Yeah. It's super engaging. Yeah, and I think it, it kind of, uh, for lack of a better definition, it's kind of Aronofsky's first paint-by-numbers film for mm -hmm. me. Like, it's very straightforward. There's not much uh, left up to the imagination, whereas The Fountain is very, like, visceral and very strange. Yeah, and something even like Black Swan, there's a lot of, like, Yeah, a lot of symbolism. A mm -hmm. lot of, like, everything's up to your interpretation by the end. But this is very studio. It's very big. I'd say it's... It's safe, but not very safe. Because mm -hmm. we also get some Aronofsky kind of creepiness and visuals in the film, which I very much enjoyed. For me, I thought aesthetically this bleakness of this kind of like uh, gross earth that's just inhabited by pretty much mostly evil people. Yeah. Um, it kind of just, um, I think it should look boring and gross that way because yeah. it is that idea of cleansing the earth and and bringing back, you know, the, the you know, giving the animals the earth basically. And yeah. if you know the Noah story, we don't have to get too much into the plot here. You basically know what's going on. A little couple of surprises here and there. Yeah. Here's the thing if we're getting into the controversy aspect of the film. Yeah. I'd say, and I think we both agreed on this, I think we're going to get upset people on both sides of the spectrum. We're going to yeah. get very upset, uh, staunch, uh, Christian religious people yeah. and very upset hardcore atheists because yeah. uh, the more you redline on either side the more this movie is probably going to piss you off because it, it differentiates um, from the from the biblical story which is pretty short I think it's like a chapter sure um, uh, in a lot of uh, I thought very intriguing ways but if you're hardcore about the Bible that's going to uh, piss you off and the fact that it doesn't throw the biblical stuff under the bus it's actually I found it pretty respectful to the story mm -hmm. if you hardline atheists that you're not going to enjoy it that much either so I, I feel like we're going to get a lot of people that are, are pretty bothered by the movie but I'm surprised it exists honestly at the end of the day when you think about Noah as a whole you think about themes of purity and uh, being good to your brother and, mm -hmm. and uh, loving people as if you would want to love yourself and uh, all that goodness that comes from the Bible yeah. is basically there. And even if you're not a religious person, you still uh, should be a good person. And I think that those elements of uh, humanity mm -hmm. are present in the film in such a way that isn't offensive to people that aren't religious and shouldn't be offensive to people who are religious. Because at the end of the day, like we said, yeah. the themes are all there. Yeah, and I feel like it very much banks a lot on that conflict 
between what is justice and what is mercy, and I yeah. feel like that applies to every human being's life. Yeah. Obviously, that list of people that Steve rattled off earlier, the acting in this movie is all top notch. I can't think yeah. of a single stinker in the bunch. Yeah, I mean, I especially love, Russell Crowe. Lo yeah, Russell Crowe's great. You gotta look past the fact that I think he's a real dickhead in real life. Jennifer Connelly, I think, great. I mean, I love her so much. Yeah. Big crush from uh, from my childhood days. Labyrinth is basically mm -hmm. one of my favorite films. And just seeing her all grown up and looking great as, at mm -hmm. 44 years old mm -hmm. and still looking hot as hell. I mean, mm -hmm. mama mia. In fact, I wasn't even looking at Emma Watson. I was looking at Jennifer Connelly the whole, the whole time, time mm -hmm. pretty much. And, and you know, and Emma Watson, great. I mean, basically everybody's great. Yeah. Ray, Ray Winstone maybe steals Ray's the Winst movie. Yeah, movie. he's uh, such a good villain. Yeah, he's very, very. He's and not as one note as I thought he was going to be. He, he has some little interesting. Uh, he's definitely the bad guy, but he has some interesting. Uh, character beats yeah, as well. Yeah, and he um, he's pretty evil, man. He's pretty mm -hmm. evil and ruthless. And he, I love it, little great. That's the right way to stop He sounds good on there. That's the right way to stop Yeah, that's accurate. So yeah, acting's great, directing's great, mm -hmm. visual effects are great. The film ha is a slow burn for me. Mm -hmm. I saw it, and then I waited a while, and I like it even more the longer it's been since it's, we've seen it. Same, I'm the same way, it sticks with you. The more I think about it, I guess that because I focus more on the stuff I enjoyed about it, and I kind of forget the stuff that I didn't yeah. like as much, and the stuff I like about it is so intricate and so yeah. smart yeah. that I can't help but love the movie more the more I think about it. I don't have much bad to say about it, which leads me to my, uh, my score for the film, mm -hmm. which I would give um, a seven out of 10. And the reason why I give it a seven out of 10 is because it's a little too long, but I highly enjoyed it. I want to give it an eight, but I don't mm. know. Well, that's okay, because I'm going to give it an 8. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10, and the only reason I don't give it a higher score, because I really think filmmaking-wise, it's well made. I think uh, theologically, philosophically, I feel like it's a very uh, intricate and intelligent movie. Uh, but that first half hour, man, I really thought it was just not, it just was not very good for me. So that's uh, 8. I feel like it's a solid 8 movie. I recommend that if you are open-minded, uh, that you should definitely go see it. So we're not the only ones that watched and reviewed this film. In fact, the rating on IMDb is 7.5. Yeah, so pretty in tune with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, the critics rating on Rotten Tomatoes is 73% currently. So there, it seems like most people are in line with you. So thank you guys so very much for watching the new Movie Thing Show. If you don't want to see movies in the theater, like I said before, you can go to netflix.com slash sourcefed, watch movies on your TV at home. Uh, I mean, maybe you have a home theater yeah. and it's like yeah. watching yeah. movies at the theater, but we'll give you a whole month free so you can join us on our movie club show and watch movies with us uh, using that link. And I'm Steve Zaragoza. I'm DJ Wooldridge. And if you'd like to see this boy here and Joe Beretta talk to Douglas Booth from the film, check out Table Talk on Monday and you can see that. Yeah, yeah. nice plug, DJ. Yeah, you're welcome. I also, there's an annotation with stuff in it you can click yeah. on too. Yeah. You, know, you know, whatever. Whatever. We're just, we're just bountiful entertainment. The entertainment here. never stops.